Well hello everyone. In this video I am seeking to establish how much the Conservatives have damaged the UK economy in the previous 13 years from Cameron to Rishi Sunak. Now in order to answer this question I had to I've spent quite a lot of time gathering some data and crunching some sums and in this video I'm going to present that data and you can uh, do what you wish with it. Um, so the contents of the video, I'm going to start uh, with my basic methodology. I'll talk you through uh, exactly how I work these things out. Uh, second, uh, I'm going to take you through the goods and the sources of prices that I used to come up with this data. Third, I'm going to look at the crucial statistics per Prime Minister, starting with John Major in 1997 moving all the way to Rishi Sunak in 2023. And then I'm going to produce some graphs to show the long-term trends. So my basic uh, methodology was to take the median wages at the exit of each prime minister. So for example, when John Major left in 1997, those figures are taken to be representative of the major era. When Blair left in 2007, those figures are Blair's when Brown leaves in 2010, those are Browns, and so on and so forth. I think that is quite fair to judge the Prime Minister at the end of their term rather than at the start of it, and we're going to go all the way up to Rishi Sunak today. Now, I will say, in the interests of fairness, I am no great fan of Rishi Sunak. Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind having a video game with him or something like that, but I'm not sure he should be the Prime Minister. That's beside the point. He is currently in the middle of his time as Prime Minister, uh, and yet I'm taking current prices for him. So he is at a little bit of a disadvantage, given that he, is, he hasn't finished his term yet. Um, we're also going to be taking the average prices for five key goods in the same time frame. Now, I did ask my fans on Twitter what goods they would like to see. So if some of the goods seem a little bit unusual, it is because they have been suggested uh, by fans of this channel. I'll explain what they are in a moment. Then I want to normalize all of the wages and all of the prices adjusted for inflation in constant 2023 uh, Great British Pounds. Uh, and the reason for that is so we can then make comparisons. We are uh, essentially taking out all of the noise, all of the rest of the economy, we're taking all of that out and we are um, able then to make apples to apples comparisons uh, across different periods of time. Okay, so th that is why uh, we are working in uh, constant 2023 Great British Pounds, um, standard thing to do uh, in economics. If you're interested in economics, I'll tell you a bit more about some courses I ran at the end of this video. Fourth, I'm then going to establish some exchange ratios between the various different uh, goods and the wages uh, for each Prime Minister, and I'm going to express those ratios as a percentage. And then finally, we are going to have a look at the percentage change of each of those goods between the various Prime Ministers. So in, in one of the goods I'm looking at, for example, is the Big Mac, has the price of the Big Mac as expressed as a percentage of median wages gone up or has it gone down from the last Prime Minister? Okay, I hope you... Uh, the, all of these things will make more sense when I get to them. I just think it's important that you know how I've arrived at these numbers before I present them to you. Okay. Now, the goods that were voted for were as follows. Uh, there was the Big Mac. A number of people suggested this, and I thought, well, given that a Big Mac index exists, that's a nice and easy one for us. Also, uh, the Big Mac is a pretty good, because the ingredients of the Big Mac don't change, the basic composition of it doesn't, um, they're sold in the same locations. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, variables that stay constant with the Big Mac. So it's a pretty good uh, good to measure the performance of the economy against. We also have uh, a lot of people wanted, you know, Carling, Stella, price of a pint. Um, 
Now, that is less good than the Big Mac because it's heavily taxed by the government. Uh, however, you know, the man in the pub, the man on the street, he likes to know what the price of a pint is. So I have included it. Also, there's good data on Lager, which, you know, I was like, okay. Um, and I'll talk you through actually finding this data. This this has taken me some hours um, to prepare today, friends. Uh, and that is because I like to go and find actual prices. You know, I spent, uh, I lost a good hour looking through Argos catalogs earlier on. Uh, and then I decided not to include the good I was looking for because I could not find Argos catalogs from 2007. So, so let it not be said that I uh, don't give due consideration to the actual statistics here. Uh, another good that came up a number of times on Twitter was the Freddo, the chocolate. And I noticed that this had been in the news recently as well because somebody spotted this... Um, <laughs> jar of freddo selling for one pound fifty in a, in, in a corner store and it made it into the sun and lo and behold there is a freddo index um and it turns out that there's a lot of people online who track the prices of freddos over time so that made it nice and easy for me to be able to find the prices um then a number of people were asking for cars as another uh you know important good that people need to buy usually after somebody's house the car is the next biggest cost and it was actually really really difficult to find um new car prices for individual models because if you can imagine you try to find the price of a 1997 ford fiesta and the entire internet is awash with um the second hand car market essentially so there's a huge amount of um kind of noise and static trying to find those stats um in the end i could only find hard prices for the volkswagen golf uh which i will explain in a moment so the, the volkswagen golf is another one of our basket of goods here and then finally we are going to be looking at uh the average rental costs in the uk um and the ons has good data on this so um without i don't want to bore you too much going into the ins and outs here but a lot of people if i don't if i don't do this i've been on the internet long enough to know that of the thousands of people who watch this video i'll get loads and loads of oh but what about this and how where did you get this number and where did you get that number and so i'm putting it all up front um to try to mitigate against some of that so the Big Mac uh, prices simply came from BigMacIndex.org. You can see it lists the local price there for various different years. And I've just taken them straight out of there and then adjusted them for inflation. Um, then the price of a pint of lager has been taken from the Statistical Handbook of Beer and Pub Association as well. And then the more recent prices, the ones after 2017, have come from the ONS who also keep good data on this as it happened and I did cross check them and they were broadly in line so I was like okay let's run with these prices these are an average of all of England and Wales as far as I understand it uh, then for the Fritos I did take them from the Frito index um, I did actually have a little look because I struggled to believe that Fredos are being sold for £1.50 um turns out in tesco's and sainsbury's they're still 25 pence but um there have been reports of you know freddo's being sold for 50 pence or over in a lot of different places all the way up to one pound 50. so i took the average price as established by the frito index which as you can see from this graph is it was something like 27 pence or something like that okay for, for 2023 and then for the Volkswagen Golf, the reason that I chose this as opposed to the Ford or in any other cars is because after literally hours of trying to find prices for individual years, I was even going on old Ford Fiesta adverts to, you know, in the hope that they might show the recommended retail price on the screen. 
um, but uh, a lot of car adverts don't actually show the price. Um, in the end, I tracked down, I, I found out the Volkswagen um, every year publish a brochure where they set all of the prices, the recommended retail prices for Volkswagen Golfs. And um, so it's a like for like comparison. I use the 1.4 five door um, Volkswagen model, the one I've highlighted there. What you see is 1.4, it's got five doors. Um, and I've taken the price with VAT included. Um, now, I will say that after a certain point, it seems they took the 1.4 off the market and you can only get a 1.5. So the ones later on, uh, you are getting 0.1 more of a cylinder or whatever. I don't know anything about cars, but it's a 1.5 as, as opposed to a 1.4 litre engine in, I think it was 2016, they stopped doing the 1.4. Don't quote me on that, but um, yeah. So you know, under Rishi Sunak, even though even you may be paying more, but you're also getting a slightly bigger engine, <laughs> okay? Um, and then finally, um, for the weekly rental prices, I've just gone straight uh, to the Office of National Statistics, who have kept records on this going back to the year dot. Um, I mean, literally the ONS. Uh, if you have a look, they've got one spreadsheet there that goes all the way back to 1215, which is one of my favourite spreadsheets in the world. But uh, anyway, uh, let us now uh, start with each of the Prime Ministers. Here is John Major. Uh, now, I don't have the change stats from him and Thatcher. I didn't go back that far. But we're using Major as the benchmark here, 1997. Um so Blair really is going to be the first one where we're going to be able to measure the change. But as you can see, hourly wages under major were about £15 an hour. Um, in fact, the way I've established these, by the way, the weekly, hourly and annual, uh, they're all from the same base start, which is the weekly wage. Um, and you know, to establish the hourly wage, I've simply divided it by 40. To establish the annual wage, I've simply times it by 52. Okay, These are pretty crude stats, but for the purposes of what we're trying to do here, um, it is they will do. Okay, uh, Then the Big Mac um, is, if you have a look, in constant £20.23, £4.21. A uh, pint of lager was £4.26. Fritos were 23 pence. Uh, I mean, they were actually 10p, but you've got to imagine all of these are adjusted for inflation in 2023 prices. So that's why they're... You may be thinking, oh, I was alive back in 1997 and they were only 10 pence, academic Asian. Well, that's why I explained to you I have adjusted these for 2023 British pounds. OK, so I'm taking out the noise of all of the rest of the economy so I can establish exchange ratios, um, which I'm going to do in a moment. OK, price of a Volkswagen Golf, 29 grand. Pretty expensive, right? And then the weekly rent back then was 93 pounds a week. Pretty good, actually. Um, and so expressed as a percentage of wages, so... For the Big Mac, the Lager, and the Fritos, I've used the hourly wage. For the Volkswagen, I have used the annual wage. And for the weekly rent, of course, I've used the weekly wage. That's why there are three different wages listed there for three different types of sums that we're doing. Okay, So the Big Mac, about 28% of an hour's work. So, I don't know, you'd have to work uh, about 20 minutes for a Big Mac, right? A uh, pint of lager, also 28%. Um, Frido, just 1.5% of wages. Volkswagen Golf, 92.9% of annual wages. Pretty expensive. Uh, cars have always been expensive. And then your weekly rent was 15% of your weekly wage. Not bad at all. Uh, the, 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 the rent under major. Okay, so this is what the economy looked like in 1997, 
according to these, you know, basket of goods that we've picked out here. Okay, so moving on to uh, Tony Blair himself, and we can see that uh, the wages have gone up. Now the hourly wages are £18.40 an hour, uh, weekly wages have gone up, the annual wages have gone up, um, and the price of the Big Mac has actually come down. It's now £3.53, um, making it only 19.2% of wages, which is a, about a minus 9% change on the major years. Uh, pint of lager, um, that has gone up slightly, um, but because the wages have gone up by even more, uh, it's actually a little bit less of the percentage of the annual wages, which is a minus 3% change. So you can see the advantage of doing it in this way, right? We are eliminating all of the other factors and we are, because we're working with these normalized 2023 numbers and then using these exchange ratios, we can actually see that even though um, the price of lager looks like it's higher, in real terms, it's actually gone down. And that is what we're capturing here, the minus 3% change under Blair. Uh, Fritos basically about the same, uh, very, very, very minor uh, decrease in the price of Fritos under Blair. Um, now look at the price of the Volkswagen Golf it goes down, goes down quite a bit under Blair. Um, now it's only 66% of wages, which is a minus 26% change. Um, clearly, these were the good years, right? Under you know this was. Uh, when the economy was rocking and rolling and this is basically the performance of the economy as you know free market economists and people like that would expect to see right you would expect to see the real prices of goods when you remove all of the nonsense of the government printing money and all of the other stuff going on you'd expect to see changes in the you expect to see changes um, in the real price decreasing, right? Because the idea is is that with automation and with progress and with uh, more efficient markets and so on, the people are actually spending less of their wages on stuff, right? You can get more cars, more chocolate bars, more Big Macs for your money. And that is actually what was happening. Um, that actually happened in the 10 years under Tony Blair from 1997 to 2007, okay? Um, uh, the only area of the economy that did not uh, go in that direction under Blair was the weekly rent, which actually increased quite a lot. Um, remember, it was just £95 a week under Major. By the end of the Blair era, it had, I mean, that's almost tripled, right? Um, which, uh, you know, and we can see that uh, as a percentage of wages, it's 36%. Uh, what was it under major, like 15%? So it's, it's more than doubled. It's more than doubled. Um, and then you can see the change is plus uh, 20%. So pretty major increase in the rental cost uh, under Blair. Now, just before we move on, from Blair, you'll notice that the percentage uh, just disappeared from the change column. And that is because I realized that uh, calling it percentage change was a little bit confusing because what I'm measuring um, in that uh, fourth column, which is the crucial column, is not really a percentage change so much as the change in the uh, price as expressed as a percentage of wages, okay? So if you can imagine your weekly rent, the most you could possibly pay would be 100% of wages and the least you could possibly pay would be 0% of wages, okay? So we're measuring a scale where 0 is the cheapest and 100 is the most expensive, okay? Therefore, an increase from 15% of wages to 36.2% of wages isn't... Uh, I don't know, 107% uh, increase, as you may express it that way. 
it is, I'm calling it plus 20. So what we're really talking about is a swing in that scale from zero to 100 of plus 20 under Blair. It went, it went up 20 percentage points. Does that make sense? Um, I realize that some people may find that a bit confusing, but I'm trying to uh, clear it up now and I've removed the percentage um, uh, to remove that co confusion. Okay, if you have any uh, questions about that, uh, let me know in the show notes and I'll clear anything up. So let's move on to Gordon Brown now, uh, under whom, of course, uh, there was the crash of 2007 and the financial crisis. So you'd expect that the economy under him would not see a lot of the gains that we saw under Blair. And lo and behold, uh, wages are largely stagnant under Brown. They haven't really moved uh, much from where we were under Blair. And as you can see, the prices are largely static around the board, uh, across the board. The rents have actually gone down a little bit. Labour were uh, keen, I remember at the time, to bring that, uh, that down. But of course, the subprime mortgage crisis uh, will have affected uh, house prices in 2007, 2008 anyway. So you're, you're seeing that reflected in this slight drop in the price of rent. Uh, the one thing that did go up uh, significantly under Brown was the price of the Volkswagen Golf. Not quite sure what that was about, but I mean, don't quote me on this, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of green policy or something that came in and in the Brown ministry. You know, maybe Petrolhead will know why there's a 10% increase in the price of cars under Gordon Brown. Um, but pretty much the economy was just kind of teetering along under Brown, recovering from the crisis, okay? And then, uh, of course, in 2010, uh, Brown was voted out and David Cameron was brought in, ostensibly with the remit to bring the economy under control, austerity, uh, you know, reduce spending. Um, but actually, for the first time under David Cameron, we see that uh, real wages go down. This is the advantage of measuring it in constant 2023 uh, pounds because we can actually just see that if you take all the noise of inflation and everything else away, um, wages have actually gone down under Cameron. Um, all of the rest of the economy pretty much as was, no dramatic swings, uh, slight increases in the price of the Big Mac and the lager, um, marginal increase in the price of cars, um, and rent continues to be pretty astronomical now at 38% of wages. And then we move on to Theresa May, of course, Cameron, uh, you know, the Brexit referendum happens. Do you remember whoop-de-doo and the little, the little uh, tune he hummed on his way out, uh, leaving the, the country to deal with the crap that he'd created? Theresa May was the woman brought in to do that rather thankless task and she basically kept things swimming along you can see that wages pretty much were stagnant under may from where they were under cameron um very marginal uh i guess decreases in the real price of the lager and the big mac and um but pretty much everything was as was apart from rents which she actually did she bought house prices down about five percent which is 4.6 percent so that's nothing to sniff at that's a pretty good achievement by may i suppose um but yeah i mean she was just uh she was just there to keep things ticking along really while the Bre brexit and negotiations were happening and then of course we had boris johnson come in uh, Johnson immediately had to deal with the pandemic, of course. Um, they printed loads of money. You could see uh, the effect on the hourly wages. They have actually gone down again from where they were under May and Cameron. Um, he, uh, the price of the Big Mac and Lager did uh, decrease in real terms again. Um, and the price of cars went down under Johnson as well. That was possibly the result of the fact that people were not buying cars 
during the pandemic and then when they started buying cars again uh, I think the cost had come down in 2021 I seem to recall but have a look at those rental prices they've now gone up 10 percent um, which means that they are now 43.7 percent uh, of wages which brings us on I um now <laughs> Liz Truss was the Prime Minister for such a short amount of time that I did not collect data for her so we're going to skip straight to uh, Rishi Sunak and these statistics are I would say devastating because hourly wages are now down to 16.2 right these are actual like real numbers now so much lower wages than uh, in the Blair years for example but even lower wages than even in the Johnson and May and uh, Cameron years um, we have seen a big increase in the price of the Big Mac up five percent price of lager has gone up marginal decrease in the price of Fritos <laughs> um, then the price of cars all of those gains under Johnson like the plus the minus eight percent under Johnson those have been wiped out by Sunak pretty much and rent continues to rise and is now 46.3 percent of wages pretty much just under half of people's salaries is now going on accommodation so things are looking pretty dire and um the video is called how much have the conservatives damaged the economy and i've got a number of different graphs now to show you what has happened here are weekly wages in constant uh british pounds and you can see that um do i have uh, hold on a minute uh fortunately the bottom has been lopped off there but you can see the general trend uh there's the peak under blair and um you can see that basically wages have been stagnant and even declining slightly uh in in recent years so bad bad wages um then we can have a look at the price of Big Macs as a percentage of wages. Massive decrease from Major to Blair. Then a steady gradual increase from Blair. All the way back up. And now Rishi Sunak's Big Mac is back up to John Major. John Major prices. So pretty much any gains that we had have been wiped out by 13 years of Tory rule. Uh, price of lager is a different story that's been up and down um, again we get the dramatic uh, decrease under Blair but then for some reason um, the uh, price goes up under Cameron and then it goes down again under May and Johnson and now it's started to go up again um, I would guess that had something to do with tax but I could be wrong uh, I don't know why the price of lager does that kind of spike in the middle there. Um, it's a bit of an outlier in uh, these stats. Um, now there's Frido as a percentage of wages and you can see that they have steadily gone up and up in price. Uh, they go down ever so slightly under Blair and they've been climbing steadily ever since. Um, this is the Volkswagen. Uh, again the dramatic decrease uh, in price under Blair and then slowly climbing the trajectory has been going upwards ever since um, however it is fair to say that the price of cars have not gone up to the major year so you're actually still better off now than you would have been back in 1997 so at the very least you can say that um, this is the big one and uh, for all of the other bits of the economy that we're doing well under Blair this bit the price of rent uh, really soared as you can see from 15 up to 36 as we said now it's up to a whopping 46 so it's climbed uh, from the Blair years it's gone up about another 10 percent none of the various governments have been able to bring this under control uh, actually the 
the best people when it comes to rental costs, as we saw, were Brown and May, um, who, I don't know how they did it, but uh, they were the ones who saw uh, decreases in, rent in real rental costs uh, during their times. But really, since uh, the pandemic and since uh, Johnson & Sunak, it really has gone through the roof. So things are not looking uh, particularly rosy, would be my uh, diagnosis. Um, I hope this was a useful exercise. Uh, if you're interested in economics, I sell courses uh, on the academic agency. There should be a like on there saying buy it now. Um, you can get Foundations of Economics there, along with other courses like the Trivium, Foundations of Politics and various other things. Um, and I'll see you around soon. Now get out.